Before we start this video, a large thank you to Cafe Military, Kenner, Solus, Clavix, Jan, Lee, Error, and Neil for their support on Patreon. I hope you guys enjoy the video. And an immense thank you to Halo Burner and Sora Stratos for their continued support to the channel. You guys are greatly appreciated, and I hope you enjoy the video. Hello everybody, today we're going to add some sound effects to our boss event. We're also going to make a script that will handle automating uh, footstep sound effects. Uh, this script is going to work a lot better for regular characters um, if their feet come higher off the ground during the walking animations. So before we do that though, let's actually give Dirk some damage collisions. I'm not going to do all this on video, but remember just put colliders wherever you want the collision to be and set it to damageable character on the layer. And then by the end you should have something like this uh, on all the fingers, the spine, the head, the legs, etc, etc. Make sure the layer is set to damageable character, that is very important. Uh, it's just the same process we did for our player character, so just do the exact same thing and then make sure you go down and check that all the layers are assigned properly or else they won't work uh, as a damage collider. Once that's done, let's save the prefab now and then we can jump on into some sound effect stuff and just other uh, random things. So I'm going to start by adding a script, or not a script, sorry, a component to Dirk, the audio source, because without that we can't actually play any sounds. I'm going to set the spatial blend all the way to 1. If you hover over that, it just basically says that this is how 3D the sound is going to be. So if you want it to be played in a 3D environment, make sure that's all the way over to 1. If you want it to be played universally, it's, uh, it's at 0. So let's go to the uh, Dirk Combat Manager now, and let's go and check out where we have open damage clutter. So what you could do is you could come over here and we could you can say we can copy this whoosh code from the player equipment manager and we can paste that right here so we're gonna give dirk a whoosh noise too but obviously we're gonna change a few things because dirk is not our player so from the player we're actually getting it from the current weapon we're, we're using dirk is never going to change his weapon so we don't need to do that so i'm going to start by making an ai boss character manager variable up here and i'm going to override the awake and i'm going to keep the base and then we're just going to say AI boss manager is equal to get component AI boss manager. Now we could uh, reference this from here and then go to the sound effect manager and then play a sound effect based on the sounds that we have in whatever script we want. But since Dirk is going to have a few sounds that other characters won't have, you guessed it, we're going to give him his own sound manager. And now if he has his own sound manager, he's going to need a place to reference that, but we'll get to that in a second. So let's start with the sound manager first. Let's go over now and go to the Dirk prefab. And if you're using a boss of your own, obviously uh, go to your own boss prefab. Whatever boss character you're making right now, go to the prefab. And if you have any unique sound effects for them that other characters won't have. Uh, so for Dirk, it's going to be a stomp and maybe a couple of weird uh, impacts on his club when he touch the ground. Uh, then you're going to want to give your boss its own sound effect manager to reference those specific sounds from. So I'm going to give him a script called AI Dirk Sound Effect Manager. I'm going to comment out this code for now. We can come back to that. I'm going to drag it where the other sound effect manager was. And before I remove the other sound effect manager component, I'm going to go into the AI Dirk sound effect manager, drop in my namespace, erase the start and update functionality as is per tradition. I'm going to make this derive from the character sound effect manager. I'm going to save that and I'm going to minimize this. And now I'm going to copy the damage grunts here and paste them into Dirk's so we don't have to manually drag those in. And then I'm going to remove this component so we only have Dirk's. Now, we have an AI Dirk sound effect manager, and we're going to put our sound effects specifically for Dirk on this script. So we're going to start with club whooshes. We'll do one thing at a time here. And I'm going to make a public, um, an array of audio clips. And I'm just going to call them club whooshes, or you can call them Dirk club whooshes, whatever makes the most sense to you, whatever is the most clear to you when you reference this months uh, later. It's still going to make sense to you. So once that's done, uh, we need to actually reference our AI Dirk sound manager script. And as you know, we have a universal manager for everybody. So Dirk is going to get an AI Dirk character manager, which is going to replace his boss manager. So for example, on a player component, if we want to reference the player locomotion manager, we go through our player manager. And on our undead component, if we want to reference our a uh, undead combat manager, we go through the undead manager. So much the same, Dirk's going to have one. It's going to inherit from the AI boss character manager, not the AI character manager, because it will still get the stuff now on the AI character manager and on the character manager. You can see how this cascades down. So again, before we erase the, the script here, I'm going to copy the components that I can, and then I'm going to erase it. So again, just to clarify, why give Dirk his own character manager? Just go over it one more time so it's very clear. Well, when we have a, uh, a character manager, it is the housing manager of all the components on our character. 
So the player manager, for example, houses all the components of a player. The undead will house all the unique components. The, the keyword here, unique, is important too, of the undead. So Dirk, since he has a Dirk character sound effect manager, we're going to reference that script through the AI Dirk character manager. And likewise, if we need to reference the AI Dirk combat manager, we'd also reference that through here. It's just basically a place, a hub, to grab every component from a character. So we don't have to reference a billion things across a billion different scripts. We just reference this one place and grab everything we need from here. So let's make the AI Dirk sound effect manager here now and make it public. And then let's just call this uh, Dirk sound effect manager. And now we can use this to basically call this an awake and then reference this sound effect manager from here. So I'm going to say Dirk sound effect manager is equal to get component AI Dirk sound effect manager. Okay, cool. So I'm going to reference this now by jumping back over to the AI Dirk combat manager. Is that where it was? Yes. And we're going to change the boss variable here to an AI Dirk uh, character manager variable. And again, remember, this one inherits from the boss manager, so it still gets all that logic. And the boss manager inherits from the AI, so it still gets all that logic. And the AI inherits from the base character, so it still gets all of that logic. So you can see the cascade effect here of uh, all these shared values. So we're going to say AI Dirk Manager, and I forgot to change the name here, so we're going to do that real quick. I should have renamed instead of just typing over it. There we go. Now we erase this comment, and we can just say... Uh, we're going to play the effects from AI Dirk Manager dot Dirk Sound Effect Manager dot, I believe I call that Club Whooshes. Let me just rename this real quick too. There we go. We're going to call it Dirk Manager, not AI Dirk Manager. It's pretty clear what that is. Uh, and I called this, yes, it was Club Whooshes, I believe. So there we go. And that should work. Oh, we're going to erase AI Boss Manager here again and replace that with Dirk Manager. So yeah, now when you open your, uh, your Club Damage Collider, it's going to play a whoosh just like the player does with their weapon. Uh, Dirk will do with his weapon. So... What's next? Well, I'm going to go to the whooshes here, and I'll show you guys real quick how I edit some audio to really get more mileage out of some. So this is a medium whoosh. If I go over here now, and I go to, say, this is Audacity, by the way, it's a free program. If I go to bass and treble, if I add a little bit more bass to this, well, that's almost too much. I know you guys can't hear this, but uh, so if I add a little bit of bass to that, and apply that, and then if I pitch shift it and uh, amplify the volume a little bit, so if you do amplification here, you can also do a pitch shift if you want to, if you need to. Uh, that just makes it sound a bit more lower toned and I'm not an I'm not an audio engineer by the way so if any of you are and you're watching um, I'm sure there's a better way to do this but this is how I do it especially quickly for prototyping and then you can just export this as a wave and then use that in your project so again the other thing you do here is uh, pitch shift and then change the pitch to make it lower this is really good for voices if you want them to sound like they're more guttural or from, coming from a monster which we'll get to later uh, so yeah I have three heavy whooshes I've just modified my medium whooshes from the previous video I'm going to put them under club whooshes so Dirk's whooshes sound a bit more impactful I'm then going to create a folder for Dirk under attack grunts. And now that lovely gentleman who made all those sound effects earlier has one for voices, as you know. And I'm just going to take a bunch of his male voices here for his attack grunts, specifically mono 4, 5, 6, and 7 under V2 male voice. I'm going to rename them to Dirk attack grunts 01, 2, 3, 4, whatever. And I'm just going to pitch shift them. That's it. Just going to change the pitch lower. By the way, you can control plus A if you're not used to Audacity. Just select the whole thing. And then you just change the pitch. I'm going to drop it. You can preview it so you can hear it before you actually apply it. And there we go. So now that I have all of these pitch shifted uh, grunts, I'm going to drop them under Dirk's attack grunts. Now let's go over and open up our script. Let's go to the Dirk combat manager. And you could play the attack grunt when you open a damage collider. But I personally don't think that sounds as good for Dirk or for a boss. You want to play it when the attack starts. And that also acts as kind of an audio cue. So we're going to get to that in a second. Uh, if you want to change how far away you can hear Dirk, you can check out this minimum distance. This is the minimum distance where the volume is at the max. So seven, I think it's seven unit units, which is seven meters, I believe. And now if we go over here to open damage cloud, I'm going to take away the play attack grunt from this. And right where we set our attacks, which you know is called the first frame of all of our attacks, I'm going to play this grunt. And this will act as both an audio cue, and it'll just kind of make more sense when he's winding up to do the grunt. Uh, and we're going to save that. So we'll preview all these sounds at the end of the video, and I'll, I'll show you a clip too with all of them with the audio actually on so you can hear it and uh, see how it sounds. So now on the balls or toes, um, yeah, let's go to the toes because there's nothing on that, no colliders. We're going to add a new script. We're going to call this the character footstep maker, or you can say character footstep sound effect maker, I guess to be more specific. So this is just something I made really fast in Nephilim uh, for humanoid characters, specifically for player models. And it just plays uh, feet sound effect when your foot hits the ground. It works really good for characters whose feet actually come actually off the ground, not when they're sliding around. That won't work very well. So if it, if it doesn't come up much, you're kind of dragging your foot around. You have to you have to edit it a little bit. 
and we will polish this in the future. I'm going to make the minimum distance 7 because Dirk's going to stomp very loud. Um, and I'm going to copy the component and apply both the script and that audio source to the other foot as well. Make sure, again, you're putting a spatial blend to 1 so it's 3D and not 2D. Otherwise, you'll hear it like everywhere. Um, okay, so that is good. Let's open up the scripts and I'm going to delete start and update functionality, put in my namespace as is per tradition. And again, this is going to be a little bit of a rougher version for the footstep sound effect maker. It will work, but we're going to polish it and add more to it in the future. Uh, I'm going to keep it very basic for now. So I'll show you how to do multiple uh, different sound effects if you touch different materials on the ground. But for the tutorial at this point, I'm going to keep it very simple. So I'm going to undo those changes after I show you what I would do. So let's make two bulls has touched the ground is equal to false and has played footstep sound effect. And that's going to be equal to false. So let's make an audio source variable called audio source. And then let's make a game object variable called stepped on object. And you need this if you want to play different sound effects, depending on the tag of an object, which we'll get to in the future. So audio source here. You can say audio source is equal to get component audio source character is equal to get component in parent character manager. And then we're going to come down here and we're going to make our first uh, function in under fixed update. We're going to call it, uh, let's just call it check for footsteps. All right, then we'll drop that in there in fixed update, check for footsteps. And now we can really get a lot of mileage out of just a few lines of code here. We'll keep it very simple and we can polish this and expand upon it more in the future. First, we check for the character if it's null return, because if your character's not there, we cannot play any footsteps, you're gonna get an error. Next, we're gonna say if the character dot character network manager is not moving dot value, then we're gonna return. Don't wanna play footsteps or even check for them if you're not moving, it's just a waste. So we can check for that there. And then right below that, we can actually start by writing some code. So the first thing we need to do is check for raycast. So first let's make a raycast variable. So raycast hit, I'm just gonna call it hit. And then we're going to check if physics dot raycast and then we're going to fire the raycast from this transform as in the foot and we're going to make the direction of the raycast go downward so we're going to say character dot transform dot transform direction vector three dot down so it's going to shoot a raycast from the character's foot down towards the ground we're going to pass our hit variable at a distance of 0.05f and we're only going to run this on the ground layer. So I can't remember actually what I called it if it's ground layer, because that's what it's called in Nephilim. No, it's something else. Let's see, I know we have it. Okay, so it's called Enviro layer, actually, I think. Yes, it is. So we're gonna use get Enviro layers here, because we're only gonna play the sound effects when we're actually stomping on the ground or the environment. So we can call that like so. There we go. Now important, make sure none of your character body parts are tagged as the Enviro layers, otherwise you'll make a footstep sound effect if they uh, if the raycast touches one of those things. So we're going to say has touched is equal to true. And then we're going to say if the player ha has not played footstep sound effects, sorry. Then we're going to say stepped on object is equal to hit.transform.gameObject. So we hit something, we're assigning an object now to the stepped on object. And else, we're going to come out here if the raycast is not touching the ground. Then we're going to say has touched the ground is equal to false, has played footstep sound effect is equal to false, and then the stepped on object is equal to null because her foot is off the ground and now we're no longer stepping on anything. So what if you have stepped on the ground and you have an object? Uh, well, we come in here and we say if we have touched the ground and we have not played a sound effect yet. So we're just going to say if we touch the ground and we have not played a sound effect yet, then we're just going to simply play a sound effect. Now, this is where it can get uh, really simple or a little bit more intricate. I won't say complicated because it's not complicated, but I'll show you. So we're going to say it has played sound effect is equal to true. That's the first thing we do is we'll play it twice. And then we're going to say play footstep sound effect. And this is a function we haven't made yet. So let's make this. Now, there are two ways to go about this. You can just reference a list of footsteps from the character and play them there which is what I'm gonna do for this tutorial for now until we come back and make it more intricate much later in a polished episode because this is not too much of a seriously important issue I think compared to other things like core mechanics. So, or you can reference um, a list of sound effects based on the tag of the ground, but then you have to remember to tag every object that you put into the world with like say snow, wood, stone. Um, you can just have like no tag be a generic sound effect. Uh, you can have dirt, mud, etc. So we'd say audio source dot play one shot world sound effect manager at instance. Then we choose from sound effect array. And then what we could do is just grab a generic sound effect from our character dot character sound effect manager dot footsteps, which we don't have made yet. 
we can do that. So I'm going to do that first. And to make it even simpler and to keep with the conventions of our project, instead of making it public and referencing it from there, I'm just going to make a footsteps and I'm just going to make a footsteps array here. And because we have play roll sound effect, play damage grunt sound effect, and play attack grunt sound effect, I'm just going to make a public virtual void for play footstep uh, sound effect. And I'll just do the exact same thing we, we have done here. Um, I'm going to rename this real quick because my naming conventions are not the same and it's bothering me. So I'm just going to put sound effect on the edge of all these uh, um, functions here. So yeah, what, I, what we're going to do is check to see if the list um, or the array, sorry, has more than zero entries. And if it does, then we're going to play a sound effect. And now we'll just reference this uh, function over here now from the character footsteps maker. And the pros of this are now you don't need to put two audio sources on your footsteps maker. Um, so instead, now you would just need none because you already have it in your character. And it's just a lot more straightforward and simple. So we'd say character dot character sound effect manager dot play footstep sound effect. Now the downsides are right now, uh, there's no logic here to really, you know, separate the sound effects if you step on something different. And also you're not using the audio source here. So it's all come from the same place. So if you're really particular but wanting the audio source to directly come from the foot, um, then you're probably not going to want to do this. You want to use the audio source above. Now method one, um, we're going to utilize the audio source above and we're going to utilize a tag system. So you could do a hybrid of both, honestly. You could still utilize the audio source on the foot while keeping it simple. It's up to you. There's no definite way, guys. Just do whatever you want to do, really, as long as it makes sense. So I'm going to go to the World Sound Effect Manager and paste this directly from Netflix. You can see here it's called Choose Random Footsteps uh, Based on the Ground. And what you want to do is basically make an array for every kind of footstep. So if you want, you can make this require a character manager so we can get the array from the character instead. And then what you want to do is go over to the character sound effect manager again, and you want to make these arrays public so you can reference them or use a get method to reference them that way, whatever you prefer. Uh, so public footsteps, and then you could have, for example, uh, this could be your generic footstep, and you could have dirt footsteps, and you could have stone footsteps, mud footsteps. I won't make a bunch of these because it would just be the same thing, but I'll just show you real quick. So I'll make three. And you can work here, and depending on your tag, if it's untagged, you could do your generic one, or you could just do, I'll just use dirt for an example, but you could just use a generic footstep if it doesn't have a tag at all, so it always plays something. Um, and then you could have another tag for, say, stone and dirt and mud, and you get it uh, just else if, else if, else if. And basically, uh, it would reference this tag, because we're passing the game object. So every game object has a tag in Unity. It checks the tag, and depending on the tag, it plays a proper footstep for you. So... This way uh, is a lot more, I'll say, intricate. You'll need to tag all the objects that you want. If you forget to tag them, though, just make one for untagged and just make it a generic sound so you always play something. Um, and then you'll need to have footsteps for all of those different materials for all the monsters that you wanted to have. So mud, wood, stone, etc. All right, so like I said, Dirk is in an arena. He's not going anywhere. He has one kind of uh, footstep sound effect, and we're just going to keep it very simple. So... I will finish this method one here and then I'm going to erase it. So we'll call audio source play one shot. We'll choose a random footstep sound effect based on the ground. We'll pass a step on object and our character and we're good to go. So I'm going to comment that out and I'm going to delete the logic now. Uh, and I'm going to use the, the method two that we have set up. So for now, you, you can just comment this out if you want to, if you decide you want to use it later, just by doing a slash star and a star slash like that. Uh, but in my case, I know I'm not going to use it, at least not yet. So I will delete it. And I will delete the dirt lists and the stone list footsteps from the character sound effect manager. Okay, so that is two ways to go about that. And you can pick the way that you prefer. Just keep in mind the other way you'll need to source more footstep sound effects. Now I'm going to go back into the character footstep sound effect maker. I'm going to make a serializable field um, for a float because I don't like using magic numbers. So that 0 0.05, we can call that distance to ground until you, you know, check for the, uh, the foot touching the ground. And I'm just going to enter that right there where that's going to be. So you might want to tweak that number because um, if you have it too high, you'll play them too early. If you have it too low, you won't play them at all. Just keep that in mind. And then I'm going to save that. Go, going to go back into the AI Dirk sound effect manager here now. And I'm going to uh, paste club whooshes and we're going to make one for club impacts. And then for our foot impacts. So we'll call this club impacts. This is when the club is going to you know, hit the ground, make a loud thud. And the same thing for our foot. Now, I'm using a sound effect that I have. Uh, you can find a bunch free. I'll link one in the description. There's one here called Grenade Sound Effects for free on Unity, and it has a lot of really cool impact sounds. So you could actually modify that or even just use it as it is for an impact that you want. 
But again, there are a lot of free impact sound effects online, and Unity has a lot of free sound effects on the asset store. Just you can take a look. I'll just link a couple in the description if you want to use those. So let's make a public virtual void play club impact sound effects. This is on the AI Dirk sound effect manager. It's going to do the same thing. We're going to check, make sure the length is above zero. And if it is, we're going to play a sound effect from the club impact. Let's do the same now for our foot impact or stomp impact rather. So we're going to say play stomp impact sound effects. Make sure our stomp impact sound effects array is greater than zero. Choose a sound effect from that array and pass our stomp impacts sound effect. All right, so now we're going to use these on animation events. So let's go to Dirk's attacks. And if you're using your own boss, then go to your own boss's attacks. If you want to insert some sound effects, find right where the club hits the ground. And obviously, the club is in the right position of this animation preview. It's actually straight. But this is where I know it hits the ground. So I'll make a new animation event. Paste, play, club, impact, sound effects. We don't need to do on this one because he spins around. doesn't actually touch the ground. And now he has a stomp on this sequence. So right there, we want to play the stomp. So I'm going to insert an animation event, change club impact to stomp. And actually, I'm going to check the name just to make sure, because I think it's actually stomp impact as well. Uh, and yes, it is. Good thing I checked. So that's going to be play stomp impact. Now the club also comes down here as well. So it's fine when that happens right there. Insert an animation event and play club impact sound events. So you could do this too for your, your walking or your, um, your, yeah, your walking animations. You could put animation events for every individual stomp but that would be a lot of work so that's why i try to automate with the script um, you have to go through all of your locomotion and do that and it would just be it would be quite a hassle all right so now let's enhance the attacks further by using particles and the particles i am using will be linked they are free in the description it's called cartoon effects remastered and i'm specifically going to use this one here that's called cfx r2 ground hit the only thing i'm going to change is i'm going to go to the color i'm going to make it white and gray as opposed to a bright yellow uh, this is just preference you make whatever you want and obviously use whatever particle you want and I encourage you, if you have the time to make your own particles, um, we're going to use this for the video because it is free and it is very easy to just drop in and use. So I'm going to rename this to Dirk Impact uh, VFX. And also the author of these particles is very talented. He has a lot of really cool packs on his asset page. If you guys want to check it out, he's definitely worth looking into, especially if you're into stylized stuff. Really, really cool. Uh, so I'm going to take this now and save this as a prefab. And I'm going to keep our naming conventions the same. I'm going to call it FX Dirk Impact 01 going to drag it into our prefabs and visual effects folder and now let's make an underscore here a one and now we got to reference this from a place so we can just honestly put this on the combat manager so let's go over to the ai dirk combat manager let's make a vfx header let's make a public game object for the dirk impact vfx and now we need to just instantiate this when this happens so let's find a good place for that now we have the activate dirk stomp function which if you guys attempted it, you should have made this into a damage collider function and gave it its own little place, which we're going to do right now. But first, let's make a game object variable inside here. Call this stomp VFX. We're going to make sure that's initialized to instantiate uh, Dirk impact VFX. Also, right now, if Dirk stomps, he's actually going to hurt himself because we're not checking to see if he can stomp on himself or not. So let's put the VFX on the Dirk stomping foot. Uh, just transform. And that should be good to go. Now we can save that and let's set up that uh, that prefab and dra drag it in there also. Let's make it delete itself after a time so it's not just lingering around the scene. So under the uh, variable, go to your assets, search it up wherever it is and insert it there in Dirk's prefab. And then go to that prefab and let's add our utility script, which we called to destroy utility to destroy after time. And let's set the time to just like two or three, depending on how long your particle effects are. Now, if we go into the scene, let's get Dirk to stomp and he is going to stomp. Boom, yep, it plays the effect, but as you can see, he hurts himself. So let's deal with that, and let's, oh, there he goes again. And let's also give the attack its own damage collider, so in the future we can check for a block properly. So we can copy everything in here, um, and we're just going to basically copy all of this logic, and we're going to make a new script, and we'll paste there. So let's copy it and delete it from here, and then let's create the new script. So I'm going to call it, what should I call it? we will call it Dirk Stomp Collider. I could call it Dirk Foot Collider, but... It's, it's not being used when he's walking, so we'll call it Dirk Stomp Collider. So I'm just going to Dirk Stomp Collider here, call that, open it up, delete the start and update functionality as is per tradition, drop in my namespace. And now, since we're actually creating the damage collider using um, a function here, so let's make a, a public void stomp attack. 
See, normally a damage collider, we have our collider, but we're actually making our collider here using a physics overlap sphere. So we're not actually going to use a regular collider. We're just generating one uh, that we can change the size of using code. So let's uh, let's change this to transform.position where we start it. And now the stop attack AOE radius. Let's make a variable up here for the Dirk character manager. And then we're going to generate our override awake method. And we're just going to keep the base awake method, but we're going to say our Dirk character manager is equal to get component in parent. Um, and let's make this a serializable field so we can see if it's null. You don't need to do that. It shouldn't be null, but just in case I'm going to do that. So if we have a problem, we can check it out. And I'm going to say Dirk character manager is equal to get component in parent uh, Dirk character manager. Now we need to reference the stomp attack AOE radius, which I believe is a private variable. So we're going to make that public. And again, if you don't like making those things public because you're afraid that they're going to be changed, you can just use a getter instead, but I'm going to make it public. So I'm going to hide an inspector to hear the Dirk sound effect manager because we don't need to see that. I'm going to hide an inspector, the public AI Dirk combat manager, and I'm going to get the Dirk combat manager on awake. Uh, the same thing we do here with our sound effect manager. And I'm just going to say Dirk combat manager is equal to get component Dirk combat manager. And now we can reference the combat manager from our damage collider script here. So we can say Dirk Combat Manager dot, and yes, the AOE is definitely private. So let's go ahead and make that public or use a getter and get it that way. It's up to you to make a function just to get this. So you, if you don't wanna be accidentally changed with your code, but again, I'm not worried about that. So I'm just going to reference it publicly. All right, that looks good. Now let's see, we had a couple more errors. So let's scroll down here and see what's up. So before we move on to let's reference the uh, the Dirk character and make sure that we're not allowing Dirk to stomp on himself. So we're going to say if the character is equal to Dirk character manager and I'm getting an error. Why am I getting an error? Oh, not characters damaged, not referencing array. If the character is equal to the Dirk character manager, we're going to continue. Otherwise, Dirk will hurt himself every time he stomps. And although that's kind of funny, it doesn't make for an interesting boss fight if he's just constantly hurting himself. So we don't want Dirk to hurt himself when he stops. Or maybe you do, and if you do, you can leave that there, I don't know. So we're gonna say damage effect dot physical damage is equal to Dirk character combat manager uh, dot stomp damage. And you might be asking, Seb, why don't you just put these variables here? Well, I just find it's easier to change everything to do with Dirk's combat uh, from the combat manager. So if you wanna tweak how he feels in combat, everything is just right here, easy for you. You don't have to go to a bunch of different places. So I like keeping all in the same place like this. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna make them public. I'm gonna make a serializable field too here for the Dirk Stomp Collider Damage Collider, which we're gonna drag in in the prefab. And now under Activate Dirk Stomp Effect, I'm just gonna say Stomp Collider dot, and then we're gonna say Stomp Attack, and that's it. So let's save that, and let's go to the prefab. I'm gonna add the Dirk Stomp Collider right where I want it to be, uh, you know, starting out to. So on his toes here on his left foot. And then I'm gonna drag in the Dirk Stomp Collider in the prefab. Uh, and we're also gonna check here, are we using this Dirk Stomping Foot variable anymore? The only place we're using it is to instantiate this stomp effect. But we can also instantiate the stomp effect on the stomp attack function. So let's move that so we can just get rid of a variable here so we don't need to use that. So let's go to the stomp attack and the first thing you wanna do is instantiate this particle effect. And now instead of referencing the stomping foot, we'll just reference this transform by saying transform. Now the Dirk impact VFX, I believe is public. We just need to reference that from the Dirk combat manager. So let's just do that right now by saying Dirk character manager dot Dirk combat manager dot Dirk impact VFX. Yes, now we can erase this uh, variable here for the stomping foot transform. And now we can save this, go back into the game here and he shouldn't hurt himself. So yeah, he stomps, he does not hurt himself. Awesome, that is working as intended. Now I'm going to play for you guys some uh, footage of all of the attacks with the sound effects, the stomping, and the VFX. So I'll mute here for a second here now and play you a clip with all the audio. And you can see that definitely adds a lot of life to the boss fight. When we add the music cue, when we actually activate the boss and we do the awakening sequence, which we're gonna do, it'll even add more life to it. So I really wanted to get to the uh, foe failed and defeated thing in this video, but honestly, we did not have enough time. I didn't realize how long it would take to actually implement all of these sounds and stuff. So on the list now for the boss, we still have the uh, great foe failed screen, the basically sequence where he's going to get up off the ground the first time you encounter him. You know, some bosses have that first time animation that they play. We're gonna do that. And then we're gonna do the boss HP bar. So those are the things we're gonna try to knock out next. 
We'll do the Boss HP Bar and the Grave Foe Fell in the same video because they're both UI elements. If we got time, we'll do the Awakening sequence. So guys, thank you very much again for joining me. And as always, a special immense thank you to my patrons. It is because of all of you lovely individuals I get to keep doing this. And I love doing this, so thank you very much. Uh, I'll see you guys next weekend, and I hope you all have a lovely week.